<sighs> Man. It was going so good today. Oh, hello, folks. I'll try to be a little bit more upbeat for you. Um, for I am the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. And unfortunately, even though it is AEW, it's a fun wrestling show. Um, AEW was a good show. Just some sad news. Uh, let's see here. Road Warrior Animal, unfortunately, passed away today. Let's see here. Let me do just a tiny bit of research here. Road Warrior Animal. I forget if it's oh wow honestly I forgot about that um so unfortunately road warrior animal passed away also um John Laurinaitis I think his son James Laurinaitis for one I, th I forget if he's still in the NFL I know he played for oh I hate to say it but Boo Ohio State but yeah that's just kind of the way things go a little bit um again all those legends um, he passed away 60 years old. Not old, but probably for all he went through. Yeah. He loved the, he led the full lifestyle. So I hate to start the show off in such a melancholy way, but. Oh, what a so yeah, um, here's my little tribute. So again, I hate to start things off on the bad news, but let's get to some positive news. I have a bunch of thank yous to shout out to. Shout out to. Um, those that were chatting, chatting up with me over in Discord uh, for yesterday's show. I was kind of like doing stuff, eating, putting together furniture. I do have to move that over. I need my dad's help. I don't want to take this whole desk apart. And I'm getting old. I might pull something. I just don't feel like moving it. It's not that that stuff's heavy either. It's just... I don't know. We'll see. Maybe that'll be my lunch, that'll be my lunch project tomorrow. Who knows? I just have to get a little drawer, drawer attached. That's nothing and then some of those books go there and some of those books go there and i get to rearrange stuff almost like christmas day i was actually shocked i got that shelf early but wait where am i going let's talk let's be more positive oh and destroyer yes sir you have earned that six count
Texas Empire. You, sir, are definitely master of the air guitar. Even though I personally never want to go to Texas. And then Dark Order 2002. You're just there listening to your briefcase boombox. Oh, shoot. I have to figure that out. The time. That's okay. I have time. I might actually have time tomorrow. We'll see. So yeah, that's not too bad, even though I work. Yeah, I can still do a bunch of stuff. But now, with all the thank yous and, and a little tribute there to Road Warrior Animal, let's talk about some AEW. Good show. Um, Can't really fault it. Not as good as last week's. But again, last week's, I think, was the exception versus the rule. So we start off, yeah. We have Joey Janela and Sunny Kiss taking on Miro, the brute of Paul Carey. God. Listen, AEW, you're not Hobo Tom. Okay, you have to think of something more creative. But that's okay. It's Miro and Kip Sabian. Um, this match was weird. If you're going to debut someone like Miro, you really should have him in a squash match. Have him go out there. Yeah, Kip Sabian can get this. Can, he's a small guy. He can get wrecked for a little bit. Miro should crush everyone, though. That did not happen. Uh, Miro came out. Crush Miro. Also. Because he came out doing his macho kick. Sonny Kiss gets in. Um, against Miro. He just gets tossed around by Miro. For the most part, it was a strong showing. But with that being said, it wasn't a squash because both Sonny Kiss and Joey Janela got some offense in. Uh, Joey hit pretty good looking super kick on Kip Sabian. And then Miro like, tweaked his ankle or something because he wasn't the same for the rest of the match. Um, there was that one weird spot where Kip Sabian used Miro as a launching platform. Miro kind of like tossed him. And you could hear like either someone or I think it was I think it was Joey Janela. He broke kayfabe. You see that or the mics are way too close to the ring. He's like, are you okay? Are you all right? Yeah, because he took a nasty bump outside. Um, Miro again got beat up a little bit by both Sunny Keys and Joey Janela. <sighs> It wasn't as bad as I'm making it sound. It wasn't... I mean, this is... Miro. It's a happy Miro day! But it, it wasn't. It was just like another match. I mean, if you're going to debut Miro, he has to be something spectacular. Um, yeah, and then he like twists his ankle going outside. There was a blind tag, uh, which led up to a pop-up lung blower. Uh, it's like a toss. Toss out back suplex onto the ring apron. You can suddenly kiss eight that. 
Um, there was a monster that came to stomp the, the accolade. Or the game over. Listen, just call it a strong camel clutch. That's all it ever should be. I'm kind of getting quasi-annoyed by wrestlers making up, oh, this is my move. This is the accolade. Yeah, it's the camel clutch. It should always be the camel clutch. And I'm sure the Iron Sheik is just saying, what the fuck is going on? In the way only the Iron Sheik could. It was a decent, it was a good match. Again, that one spot kind of ruined it for me. Yeah. It's a ham sandwich match. Then we have a little bit of uh, John Moxley and Eddie Kingston getting into it. They both got to promo each other. They have to be separated. Yeah, that, that, that is what it's going to be, um, Lance. Holy hell, Lance. With Rosestone with COVID-19, so that's not good. Or was it Brian Cage was around someone with COVID? Yeah, yeah, one of those two were on someone with COVID-19. So yeah, they're not here. Bam. They get, they get, the, they get the true, they get the true. Okay, they get the true X right there. Um, then we have Evil Uno taking on the Hangman Adam Page. This is actually pretty fun. Uh, the good rope running by both at least uh, Hangman and Page is a shoulder tackle to Evil Uno. Evil Uno comes back with a rebound shoulder tackle. Hangman and Page, uh, oh, this was amazing. A deadlift, bow and arrow, fallaway slam. When I first saw it, I'm like, oh, that's that's a very that's a very collegiate wrestling move. Bravo, had Hangman and Page. He just showed up his strength, picked him up, tossed him behind over his head, fall away. Whoa, that's some good stuff. In New Japan, I don't think he was really allowed to shine. He was kind of always that fifth wheel in the Bullet Club. Uh, it wasn't until he left with Kenny where thing, and the Young Bucks where things actually happened. That's just beginning to annoy me now. I'll figure out something. Like I'll do that after the gym. Oh, yeah, that's right. 15 more minutes. And I have to kind of cheese this out of here. But, um, yeah, Evil Uno did the spot. Oh, Paige also did an amazing sun sh slingshot crossbody. And he just said, whoop. I'm not landing on my feet this time. You better catch me, big boy. Um, then there was a ref kick pass off spot from Chikara. Again, back when, when Evil Uno was Player Uno as part of the Super Smash Brothers. Um, let's see here. Paige. He got shoved off the top rope all, all the way into the bicycle rack on the floor. And I refuse to call those barricades. They're Bicycle racks, just like Tony Schiavone said. And then the Dark Order show up. They kind of approach a fawn, Hangman, and Page. Evil Uno says, no, back away. Yeah, probably not. I'll tell you what, Evil Uno, that senton hit on Adam Page, that was smooth looking. I'll tell you what, when, when, when you do things good, I will always applaud. I don't care, heel, face, crappy wrestler. Freaking five-star match machine, barely able to eat a piece of toast. If you do good stuff, I will applaud you, Evil Uno. That senton, I'll tell you what, he might be up there. He might be on the senton Mount Rushmore. Again, tell me your senton Mount Rushmore. Cause I still think Evil Uno is maybe number four. I mean, Matt, I mean, Jeff Hardy has to be up there because of the Swanton bomb. It's slightly different, but who cares? I think, who else did a pre? Tozawa does a really good senton, too. And I'll say just for the heck of it, I'll go the Great Muda. So there we go. Great Muda. Jeff Hardy. Tozawa. And Evil Uno. That's the Mount Rushmore of Sentons. Um, however, that was not enough. Eventually, Hangman and Page did hit the Buckshot Laird. Hangman and Page wins. Good match. I was, again, I, there were some moments, you know, I was impressed for parts of it. This is a surf and turf match. Then Kenny Omega was on commentary, and he actually adds to it a little bit. 
Uh, then we go backstage. Tony Schiavone, the Young Bucks. Yeah, Nick Nick Jackson comes out, smashes Tony's cell phone. Um, so yeah, and just threw money at him. It's like that's a lot of money. That's that's a brand new like Galaxy Twenty or something cell phone. I, I don't even know. My cell phone. Where's my cell phone? My cell phone is being charged. Right there we go. Behind me. It stays there most of the time anyway. Now it's just really annoying me for some reason. I don't know. I'll fix that up before I go to the gym. Pull something. Who knows? Um, let's see here. Then he smashes the phone. Then it's Orange Cassidy versus Brody Lee. Again, this is where AEW could have used a pretty good squash match. Brody Lee should have crushed Orange Cassidy. But instead, Orange Cassidy does Orange Cassidy. goes for sweet shin music. Brody Lee's just like, he just slapped the taste out of him. Whoa. Because then he took the sunglasses. Well, he took the sunglasses. Well, first to start off, he, of course, then he takes off the sunglasses. He takes out the sunglasses, puts them on, takes them off, puts them on. Um, Anna J. Brody takes them, throws them down the mat. Like, just clubs. Only word I can use to describe it. Clubs. Poor Orange Cassidy. Someone in the audience does get a free pair of sunglasses. A free pair of sunglasses is a good pair of sunglasses. Um, uh, Brody Lee just decided to like, toss them around and threw them out of the ring. Then he would do the rough distraction. Then the rest of the Dark Order would do what the Dark Order does best. They jump Orange Cassidy. After a while, it's like, okay... Uh, Brody Lee's like, okay, let, let, let's go. Let's restart this match now. Um, again, Brody Lee hit a rolling senton. That was pretty amazing. Not as pretty looking as the previous senton from Evil Uno, but still pretty darn good. Um, and there was the catapult, <laughs> the slingshot or catapult into the second rope. That's always good to see. Orange Cassidy then finally figures out, you know, he can't be a goof. He has to use his quickness. Uh, he starts to get a bunch of DDTs. Um, we have some Dark Order miscues. Um, there was some weird some weird spot there, too. It was like some like kind of diving DDT. It just seemed really awkward. It's one of those things where in walking through the match, it sounds great and amazing, but when you actually try it, eh, not so much. <laughs> yeah, then Anna J just he has the orange Cassidy. That's also funny. Um, and eventually there's the for Cassidy does DDT, a couple arm drags, arm ringer. Um, really, it just takes. It was one missed. Uh, discus Lariat, but the second Discus Lariat was a power bomb. then another Discus Lariat, Brody Lee wins. Could have been better. It was a ham sandwich of a match. And then this is when I started to get a disinterested, because then they just went to, like, Promoville. Then, of course, they beat up Orange Cassidy, and Cody Rhodes comes out. And Cody Rhodes just looks like like pissed off Cody Rhodes because he dyed his hair black. He sells that god awful neck tattoo, which Brandy must just hate. Um, black suit goes in there, beats up everyone, looks good, impressive. Then we have Matt Hardy come out with a promo with Private Party, him and the Inner Circle, and Chris Jericho jaw back and forth to each other. That's probably something they've been they might have been working on. Who knows? Back in the WWE, now they get to do it. FCR come out for a promo. Say, yeah, well, you know what? We're not, we're gonna let you we're gonna let you rest up because the best friends come out. And say, yeah, we want that tag team title match. Now they're like, ah, 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 get back to us in a couple of weeks. You guys are are still beat up. And then uh, they were making fun of FCR's uh, red trunks, and I said, this is what real men do. And of course, they hug it out. So that's kind of classic. Then we have uh, Thunder Rosa taking on Hikaru Shida. I'm sorry, Thunder Rosa and Hikaru Shida taking on Ivelisse and Diamante. It was pretty good. Um, Ivelisse and Diamante, they double-teamed Shida a bit. 
when she would make a comeback. Uh, went to the outside. And then there was a kick by Thunder Rosa and, like, knee sandwich. Poor Diamante. Because she just got a kick on one side, knee to the other side. Uh, Thunder Rosa was a gory... Gory... Uh, gory, oh, gory buster. Got Gordy Buster onto Diamante. That's always fun to see. It's always fun when you use your, your partner as a weapon, at least. You can't say it's a foreign weapon because they're they're in the ring with you. So it makes sense. Uh, Thunder Rosa was doing arm drags a lot. Scoop slam. Always good. Again, Thunder Rosa very much so. The, the lucha influence. Uh, the sit down. The, the sit out senton was pretty nice. Then Diamante and Ivelisse begin to double team Thunder Rosa. Uh, Ivelisse had a had, had had probably the the weakest ever blue Thunder Bomb. Um, a little bit more back and forth. Thunder Rosa and Hikaru Shida get back on the same page, and they pick up the win. Meh. It's a ham sandwich match. Oh, wow, this might be one of my fastest shows ever. Uh, then we have Moxley taking on Eddie Kingston. Um, this was pretty good. It kind of played out the way you thought it would. It felt like a brawl for the first half of the match. It felt like they were back in a bloodless, yeah, CZW, because they didn't seem like they were going to do all the stuff they were going to do. Um, then there's a backdrop. A backdrop driver, which I'll tell you what, I don't know how Moxie got up from that. And he just delivered a headbutt. Very much Stone Cold Ishii style, Stone Cold Pitbull Ishii style. Then, let's see here. The thing is, Eddie Kingston told him the spot, and he made it look so obvious that it's like, you know, I can see that. You put your forehead against the guy's shoulder and you're there for like forever and then back up and then slap him. Then turns into some slaps, uh, back fist, and then Moxie went into a sleeper, um, put Eddie Kingston into a sleeper hold, transitioned into the bulldog choke, also known as a captain. And in this instance, it's more like a captain's hook because he's really wrenching on the back. Moxie wins. You know he wasn't going to lose. A ham sandwich of a match? Then the Lucha Brothers come in. They beat him up because, of course, they're family with Eddie Kingston. Then, uh, I forget his name, that guy shows up. Um, Ricky Stark shows up. Darby Allen shows up. Then Taz shows up. And it's just a brawl. The heels stand tall. And... What can I say? That was. It wasn't. The first hour was good. The second hour. Yeah. It was a ham sandwich of a show. Good. AEW is taking on this roller coaster of emotions. And that was AEW Dynamite. An ham sandwich show. You can't complain about much. Can't really praise much. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow, eventually, El Vagabundo is going to stop on by. We'll give his predictions for um, Clash of Champions Cold Rush. God, that sounds so awkward. Then Friday is going to be SmackDown Review. Saturday, I'm off. <laughs>